Tad, it's Maximus here. This time with a quick review of this Craftsman Industrial 3 8 inch Carpenter's Drill. <laughs> this is a real unique unit. Super special because we got a screwdriver here, 4,000 RPM. This doesn't look like a drywall screwdriver. It has a double reduction gearbox. We know that because we turn the chuck and the motor moves the same direction, which means there's going to be an intermediate gear. But when we look on the back side, we actually see that what its proper label is. And this looks like an original label. I don't see why somebody would have repasted the label off a screw gun onto this. I believe it really was. Somebody grabbed the wrong sticker when they made this. This is one of the older uh, main USA units. 315, so this is made by either a company called Dial or by, which ended up being bought out by Ryobi. So this is essentially a Ryobi drill for Craftsman. It is pretty decent. I actually have never seen one of this style. It's really bulky. Uh, pretty surprising, but it does have a flat top. Makes it kind of nice to hold, but man, this thing is half inch drill heavy. And speaking of half inch drills, one thing that is indeed heavy duty is we can see that it has a half inch 20 thread. It's a 3 8 chuck on a half inch spindle. That is actually pretty heavy duty. Whenever you run in these old drills, you just try to pull the spindle in and out. This one's totally tight and it's really tight as far as side wobbles so we know that it has ball bearings anything that has sleeve bearings you'll get a little bit of in and out play not my favorite at all of course with drills with plastic bodies the gearbox screws do stretch the plastic a little bit so you peri periodically want to check them make sure they're tight surprisingly enough they included option for side handle uh which i think is a little ridiculous we can also see that they do have a gasket in the gearbox I also don't like that the side handle is mounted on the diaphragm, this intermediate part, rather than the front of the gear case. The reason for that is, is that if you are under heavy torque situations, uh, it ends up wanting, you're holding the handle on this part, and so this part of the gearbox wants to twist around, and it puts extra stress on the screws, so it's not my favorite. Side handles should always be in the front part of the gearbox, that way when you're torquing, the only real stress on the screws is the power that's actually be being delivered by the motor rather than just, you know, your hands and everything else. Anyway, pretty decent unit. Runs pretty smooth. No excessive arcing. It does have a, a, a variable stop. And what I actually like about this variable stop here is we can turn it all the way down. You can lock it at a low speed so it's great for certain polishing operations. But you can adjust it while it's running, which is actually kind of an interesting feature. I really like that quite a bit. Anyway, let's do a quick drill operation. I'm going to use my standard block of wood and my uh, standard three-quarter inch installer's bit. And we'll see hey, how well the chuck, this bit, since it's so big with such a small diameter shank, really wants to slip. So we'll see how good the chuck is. When you really want bits to hold tight, you need to... Tighten and then turn the chuck and tighten in all three holes. I actually did that a couple three times So this chuck is about as tight as it's gonna get Let's see if it uh, holds up One little slip, but that's actually not too bad. Only the Milwaukee, I did a test of this with a uh, Milwaukee, but it had a huge industrial chuck this one's really not too bad. I just had a skill extra tool that I was using uh, that I reviewed. It was slipping real bad, so I'm actually pretty happy with that. Actually surprised because this is uh, it's an okay chuck. It's all a solid steel chuck, but still. Surprised how well uh, it held on to that bit. Overall, not a bad mo drill motor. Let's take a quick look inside here to take a look at the brushes. I do need to put a strain relief on here, so we'll see what I can do about that. Those are okay screws. They aren't plastites. Here we go. This is a plastite screw. Next, This is the one that just came out of that drill. You can see plastite screws have a second, two sets of threads cut on them. One set is really extra tall. So I may end up using these when I reinstall it if they'll fit. These are a little bit too, a little bit long, but 
These screws are okay, that when you're working with plastic, you need a lot of extra bite. But this unit was also made somewhere in the 80s, maybe the 90s, so. Either way, it doesn't seem like it's a bad unit once again. And, oh, that last one, that's down in a big old hole. And pop that off easily enough. Take a closer look at this motor. Brass brush, brush guides, I do like that. We can see that those things, compared to my thumb, those are tall. Those are going to have some long brushes in them. It's exactly what I like. What I like to see. We can see easy spade terminals on there. We can also see that this has been used because that's pretty black, but not that much. We are unplugged, so I won't shock myself. But I can run my finger across there, and we can see it's just started to discolor that commutator. But I can't actually feel any kind of lip. We can see that it is pinched windings on the motor, but. They did put some epoxy to help protect the wires right at the junction. And we can see quite a bit of uh, lacquer on the armature itself. So that's not too bad. And I don't know if I mentioned it, it is four and a half amps. So that's why it didn't bog down that much. The field isn't very well protected. But I suppose it's okay in a tool like this. They sold us something out of Milwaukee's playbook. And I'll show you that right here. Let me just slowly work this brush out. Oh yeah, tons of brush. Nice and wide too. We see something else copper with some wires running into it from the bottom of the trigger. This is a variable speed, but the little uh, triac or whatever that circuit is called, we can see has actually been pulled out of the housing of the, sh the, this is the actual transistor that does the variable speed that chops up the AC. And it's not inside the trigger, it's actually separate mounted to a, a heat sink right around where there's a bunch of airflow. And Milwaukee does that on their heavy duty drills. That's actually really surprising. That's very positive. That is indeed that with large brass brush holders. Uh, Craftsman was actually, or whoever made this was pretty serious about having a decent quality drill. What is a disappointment is there isn't a separate cord pinch. There is this, but that shelf is only flush with the top of that, so. I'm gonna have to figure out something. So unfortunately, this uses a cord that had an integrated molded strain relief. You can't just open it up like this, pull off a strain relief and put another one on like, you know, DeWalt and other, you know, <coughs> other drills. And so that's actually a big disappointment. Why they go through all this other effort of the build quality and then make it so you have to buy proprietary power cords, super annoying. Even though they got other details right, I was just noticing. See, that's a little nut. So the screws that hold in the field aren't screwed in the plastic. They screw through into some nuts. So that's another nice design detail. That is just, that was a mistake. It's the only way to put it. Got that back together. Let's go and knock apart this gearbox here. I won't get in there. We'll get into this one. Wow, that screw does not want to cooperate. Wow, how annoying is that? It is pretty long because that long di or that deep diaphragm. All right, the last real significant part we're gonna. Oh, that's curious. I've never actually seen blue grease before. And what appeared to actually be a seal actually just happened to be I think it was just that there's a slight recess or undercut. We can see needle bearings there. We can see that this is obviously a uh, gear, or at least this diaphragm designed to be made for different drills because we have an empty spot, so that would have been for another gear for triple gear reduction. Get that on there. Oh. So either somebody re lubed this or they just use really high quality grease uh, to begin with. Man, there's a lot of space in the gearbox. 
we can see that they use a dowel pin to, so when you install the gearbox it aligns between these little shelves here and that dowel pin to keep it clocked right so that the gears don't canter off so that's actually a pretty big deal we can see that it's helical cut on the motor so it gives it makes it run a little bit quieter lasts a little bit longer because of course when you slant the gear teeth for the same thickness you actually get a wider tooth so besides that we can actually see just down in there another empty provision so this whole gearbox was designed to either be for three eighths double reduction drills or half inch uh, triple reduction drills just want to pull that out I don't know if you can really see that down in there but that bearing that this other end of this gear is mounted on is also a needle bearing we can see it's straight cut on the second stage which is something that uh, is pretty common just because it ends up being lower speed and they don't have to worry as much about noise and the teeth are a bit coarser it's a bit larger so uh, they don't need quite that's a pretty common operation is to have the first stage of the motor to be helical cut because that high speed motor and the tiny little spindle on the end of the motor means a bigger deal than uh, the straight cut uh, hob gears just because uh, the straight cutting is actually obviously a lot cheaper than having a machine that cuts on a slant or as a twist. And the motor is indeed ball bearing. It's hard to see if I can just see the edge of the bearing right around the motor. And we know it's a ball bearing in the front of this chuck because the chuck is still totally tight even though there's only one thing holding it which is what's up in front. So let me put this back together really important to make sure these mating surfaces are nice and clean if you somehow get some particle in there and you mount up the gearbox and it's tilted one way or the other that is also very bad for reliability although usually you can hear that issue the gears will sound real funny so anyway it was a neat old craftsman industrial drill and just wanted to share it with you all and just add another piece to my tool database and the tool history particularly power tool history it's even Less people are interested in these than hand tools because, of course, power tools are seen as wear items and disposable. But And, man, there's a lot of varying grades, just like there are uh, hand tools. But this Craftsman, besides the strain relief thing, and I'm going to make a, a separate video about how to deal with this situation where you have to get proprietary power cord. Everything else about this drill is absolutely heavy duty. There's no question the whole electronics and the external circuit and the big brushes and all ball and needle bearing with a pretty heavy duty gearbox that has an alignment peg so it's designed to be serviced an actual decent all billet steel chuck uh, it's not bad and actually I don't mind that the vent is around the bottom because then this whole area is blocked off and when you're running it it's not blast, it, you know, dust that may be getting into the vents isn't just blasting you square in the face. Really, <laughs> it's not a bad drill. I mean, that's just all there is to say about it. That This does not mean that any old Craftsman Industrial tools, there are some Craftsman Industrial uh, labeled power tools that really did suck. But this particular drill, besides being excessively heavy, for a 3 8 carpenter's drill actually delivers this thing really does i'm actually kind of happy to have picked it up anyway really appreciate everybody <laughs> and i get the uniqueness of having it be factory mislabeled anyway really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing and if you haven't subscribed please do till next time caddis maximum